I just think it's the most interesting thing there is. A good song can be touching, very illuminating, very powerful little gem story. Yeah. I'm Jim Turr. I'm a songwriter, and uh, I want to share with you in this series called Song and Story Weekly, which is actually going to be four times a week, the joy of songwriting. You know, I, I'm not sure many people think about it, but except songwriters, but we listen to songs all day, every day. We appreciate it. We're touched by them at best. And uh, we don't think much about how they're written or we don't think about writing them. And it's actually a fascinating craft. I aspire to write uh, particularly country hits like uh, Tom T. Hall and Bobby Braddock have consistently. That's kind of my brass ring. I want to share with you some songs I've written and recorded. Uh, some of which I think are pretty good, and I've, I've had a little success, and give some background. I always think it's interesting uh, with regard to anything, songs or movies or anything, to hear how it was put together, how it was, how the thought came about, what the considerations were. I, I just think songwriting is about the most fun you can have, and uh, the rewards are great if you get a good hit country song cut by somebody else, in my case. For the first 31 um, episodes here. I'm just going to take 31 songs from this book that I wrote actually way back in 1988 called You Got to Be Stupid to Sing Country Music and other unusual song lyrics by Jim Turr. I hope you'll enjoy this series on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm going to have a new song every day, a little background on the, on the writing, the recording, whatever. And then on Saturday, particularly, I'll emphasize more the songwriting considerations so that the Saturday installments could be used as a forum for thinking about your own songwriting or working on it as a group with or with your family. I think that'd be a great activity. So welcome and let's get to it and here we go. I'd like to introduce once again my friend Meredith Britt, fabulous collage artist. I will in fact link to something of hers so you can see what this how this lady could possibly be wasting her time interviewing me. The, the depth of that song is, uh, must be inspired by the reality of uh, your life. So tell me about your relationship. To the person uh, that this song was not about? <laughs> well, number one, let me say that uh, these songs, uh, most of them are not really inspired by any uh, long drawn out actual experience uh, in the mind of the the sh short attention span mind of the songwriter, at least for me, I just have a thought or a hook. Like, I don't need my space no more, and where would that go, and where would that train of thought go, and I think that's where this came from. Well, I imagine there are many amusing anecdotes related to this song. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> wink, wink. You are, so, you are so intuitive. I do have one story about this. At the time that I wrote this song, I was very involved with a uh, program that I, I have totally good feelings about, nothing bad to say about like most people do, Don't have never been there, but it was called EST. But a friend of mine, a room, housemate of mine, was working with that program and uh, I had written this song and, and the terminology is something that's used in that kind of human potential movement, I, don't need, I need my space. And I asked this gal to share the song with uh, somebody in the organization who we both knew. And she reported back to me that uh, he was not amused. He said it's hard enough to get people interested in self-actualization and development and so on without songs making fun of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh well, that's not my job. Did you enjoy the creative process of this song? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to answer that question, Very then I'm going to so. tell you what songwriters eat to be good songwriters. But yes, um, and the dating customs of songwriters. But yes, I, I don't think I ever not, didn't enjoy writing a song. Even when it's sort of work, workmanlike work, I enjoy it. And sometimes I really enjoy it. I, I, and thanks for asking. I, I think songwriting is the most fun you can have with your clothes on. And uh, I always enjoy writing songs. That's why I'm, that's why I'm enthusiastic about it, promoting it to people. <laughs> yes, you are. Is there a certain vegetable you associate with this song? <laughs> no. Where was it recorded? That's a good question. It was recorded in Santa Fe um, at the little studio of Rick Mena, 
whom I recorded with for many years. He has a little home studio, and now it's changed forms, but I think this was in the days of the 8-track Fostex recorder he had, which was a great, uh, great recorder. And uh, he played guitars and harmonica and everything. I played bass. The drum machine we programmed played drums. And uh, somebody played piano on this one, I believe, and I can never remember who it would have been. But anyway, that was how these things were recorded. I like the sound of these old recordings. This is a little bit off the topic about these two songs. Do you ever uh, write in a style I know you used to do, bluegrass? Well, um, I like, I love bluegrass more than anything as far as uh, what I like to listen to. I've written some songs that I hope could be recorded by a real bluegrass band, and I've sort of semi-recorded them as demos in bluegrass style, but none in this particular series or collection. But thank you. I always love to say the word bluegrass because I love it so much. Oh, yes. Okay. And when you um, come back to a song, do you change it? Like space? When I come back? Yes. It's been several years since you wrote uh, Space. Oh, God, no. I would never... This well, it was 1988. Sometime prior to 1988, I would never spend any time on a song uh, Nothing that old. Nothing changes. Probably not. <clears throat> well, maybe if some m reference changed, but not on that one, I don't think. So uh, the illustrations are just absolutely uh, darling. What is? Uh, where did? What can you tell me about that? The illustrations in this book were done by Jay Lynch, who was uh, really quite a famous guy. He did Bijou Funnies and Nard and Pat and so on. You may recognize his style. I do. And this particular, this particular uh, <laughs> illustration, I think I gave him this idea because this is based on a item that I saw in Mad Magazine many, many decades ago, even before this book. It said, uh, you know you're boring when you're at confession and the priest asks you, excuse me, what's a four-letter word for a European blackbird? <laughs> I used to see the shrink about twice a week. He'd work crossword puzzles while I'd try to speak. He'd lecture me about how I needed my space. And then he'd yawn right in my face. And the therapy group I went to every Wednesday night, well, we never did nothing but cry and fight. I thought I needed help so much. But all I needed was a loving touch I don't need my space no more Just come in and close the door No need to straighten out my head Just let me straighten out my bed I don't need those little pills When you can cure all my little ill I'm okay and you're so fine I bless the day I made you mine Yeah, I've taken down all those little stickers The ones that used to make everybody snicker That reminded me to have a nice day Well, they all been nice since you came my way And who needs those cassettes with the sound of the ocean When I can relax to your rock and motion and all those workshops that used to take up all my time and money now you're the only expert i've been seeing honey i don't need my space no more just come in and close the door no need to straighten out my head just let me straighten out my bed i don't need those little you can cure all my little ill I'm okay and you're so fine I bless the day I made you mine <laughs> Yeah, those healing crystals and motivation tapes. I don't think that's what it takes. I enjoyed those self-improvement books. 
But now I'm enjoying all your sexy looks. Yeah, the queen bee jelly and the tofu sandwich is going to be rough without them, but I, I think I'll manage. The herb teas and the goat cheese that got me through the day. Yeah, I threw all that stuff away. I don't need my space no more. Just come in and close the door. No need to straighten out my head. Just let me straighten out my bed. I don't need those little pills. When you can cure all my little ill, I'm okay, you're so fine. I bless the day I made you mine. Your tender touch just kills me. No one even bills me. I bless the day I made you, made you mine.